Welcome to the Bless Carlo Akuta's Project teaching videos. In this week's teaching video, we are going to be sharing about St. Patrick, the patron saint of Ireland, an incredible saint who had such an impact on the Isle of Ireland, and of course, in bringing Christianity to Ireland. And from there, of course, the flame of Christianity spread from Ireland across Europe and the world. So this week's video, uh, Father Raymond, you will introduce St. Patrick. But just before we begin, you might lead us in a short prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. St. Patrick, patron saint of our land, chosen by God to bring the faith to Ireland, come walk among us again. Intercede for us to the Most Kind Father, through his only begotten Son, for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon our nation, that the leaders of our country and elected representatives will enact just laws which will be in accordance with the holy will of God, that our bishops, priests and religious and those who devote their lives to spreading the gospel will be protected and kept safe in God's love and service, that the hatreds and injustices in our country be dissolved, that we will be blessed with an increase in vocations to priesthood and religious life. And that he may, that Almighty God may bless our blessed Carlo Acrutus group also. Amen. In the name of the Father, mm -hmm. and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Great. So in this video, we are going to be sharing with you passages from St. Patrick's Confessions, which is his own autobiography. So Father, even you may like to introduce it. So just to say, as we begin reading from St. Patrick's Confessions, that there was a little bit of Christianity in Ireland before St. Patrick came to preach here. But Christianity hadn't really taken off until St. Patrick arrived. He had great success in his preaching and Christianity began to blossom after he came. He is therefore rightly named as the patron saint of Ireland. So in this video, we will look at St. Patrick's autobiography, which is called the Confessions. The book is written in Latin. Now that word confessions, it doesn't always mean a confession of sins. The word confession is also used in relation to describing something that happened or telling a story. And this is how St. Patrick is using the word uh, in this book. He's telling his story, his, his version of what took place in Ireland when he was here. St. Patrick doesn't tell us the year of his birth, but we do know from a different source that his missionary activity in Ireland began in the year 432 AD. So scholars estimate that he was born around the year 385 AD. So we're about to begin now reading uh, most of his confessions. In the very first paragraph, St. Patrick tells us that he was born in Banavem, Tabernier. The only problem with this is that no one knows where Banavem Tabernier mm. is. It no longer exists today. Um, scholars, however, would guess that it was in the west of Britain. St. Patrick also says that he was a Christian since his childhood. He had been baptized, but he was not a strong believer. His grandfather was a priest. Now, this would be very unusual today, but we must remember that celibacy was widely practiced by priests since the early church, but it did not become obligatory for all priests until the 12th century. So we're going to hear now um, the very first opening paragraph of St. Patrick's Confessions read. My name is Patrick. I am a sinner, a simple country person, and the least of all believers. I am looked down upon by many. My father was Calpurnius. He was a deacon. His father was Potitus, a priest, who lived at Banavem Tabernier. His home was near there, and that is where I was taken prisoner. I was about 16 at the time. At that time, I did not know the true God. I was taken into captivity in Ireland, along with thousands of others. We deserved this, 
because we had gone away from God and did not keep his commandments. We would not listen to our priests who advised us about how we could be saved. The Lord brought his strong anger among us and scattered us among many nations, even to the ends of the earth. I was among foreigners, that it was seen how little I was. We have just heard about Patrick's kidnapping by pirates at the age of 16. They bring him to Ireland to work as a slave, but he doesn't blame God for the kidnapping. In fact, he blames himself for having gone away from God, for having a weak faith. But now, in Ireland, working as a slave, he wakes up to his need for faith and his need for God. It was there in Ireland that the Lord opened up my awareness of my lack of faith. Even though it came about late, I recognised my failings. So I turned with all my heart to the Lord my God. And he looked down on my lowliness and had mercy on my youthful ignorance. He guarded me before I knew him and before I came to wisdom and could distinguish between good and evil. He protected me and consoled me as a father does for his son. Now Patrick in his writing is very grateful to God. He is even thankful to God for his captivity in Ireland. That is why I cannot be silent, nor will it be good to do so, about such great blessings and such a gift that the Lord so kindly bestowed in the land of my captivity. This is how we can repay such blessings when our lives change and we come to know God, to praise and bear witness to his great wonders before every nation under heaven. So I wonder how St. Patrick captured the hearts of the Irish people. How did he preach? What did he say in his preaching? So here now in the next paragraph, we hear what St. Patrick said to the Irish people, what creed he pronounced to them. This is because there is no other God, nor will there ever be, nor was there ever, except God the Father. He is the one who was not begotten, the one without a beginning, the one from whom all beginnings come, the one who holds all things in being. This is our teaching. And his Son, Jesus Christ, whom we testify has always been, since before the beginning of this age, with the Father in a spiritual way. He was begotten in an indescribable way before every beginning. Everything we can see and everything beyond our sight was made through him. He became a human being and having overcome death was welcomed to the heavens to the Father. The Father gave him all power over every being, both heavenly and earthly and beneath the earth. Let every tongue confess that Jesus Christ in whom we believe and whom we await to come back to us in the near future is Lord and God. He is judge of the living and of the dead. He rewards every person according to their deeds. He has generously poured on us the Holy Spirit, the gift and promise of immortality, who makes believers and those who listen to be children of God and co heirs with Christ. This is one we acknowledge and adore, one God in a trinity of the sacred name. In the next paragraph, Patrick shows himself to be very, very humble. He's very modest in character. If you remember, the opening line of this book was, I am Patrick, a sinner. Now, here in this next paragraph, St. Patrick admits that he doesn't speak with the same eloquence as others. He often admits that he is not very well educated. He had missed out on a lot of his education when he was a slave in his youth in Ireland. If I had been given the same chance as other people, I would not be silent, whatever the reward. If I seem to some to be too forward, with my lack of knowledge and my even slower tongue, still it is written. 
stammering tongues will quickly learn to speak peace. How much more should we want to do this, who are, as it is said, a saving letter of Christ, even to the ends of the earth? Although it is not well expressed, still this letter is genuinely and strongly written in your hearts, not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God. The Spirit is a witness that what is of the countryside is also created by the Most High. So St. Patrick didn't grow up in a big city and he wasn't very educated. He came from a simple country place, he tells us. And now he speaks fondly about God's mercy. He's always mindful. He remembers the mercy that God has shown him. We read now from paragraph 12. So I am first of all a simple country person, a refuge and unlearned. I do not know how to provide for the future, but this I know for certain, that before I was brought low, I was like a stone lying deep in the mud. Then he who is powerful came and in his mercy pulled me out and lifted me up and placed me on the very top of the wall. That is why I must shout aloud in return to the Lord for such great good deeds of his, here and now and forever, which the human mind cannot measure. Now St. Patrick always remembered his captivity in Ireland. It brought great suffering to him, but it was the turning point in his life. And in those six years of captivity in Ireland, minding sheep on the, the mountaintop, he learned how to pray. So we listen now about how he learned to pray uh, on that mountain. After I arrived in Ireland, I tended sheep every day and I prayed frequently during the day. More and more the love of God increased and my sense of awe before God. Faith grew and my spirit was moved so that in one day I would pray up to a hundred times and at night perhaps the same. I was even remained in the woods on the mountain and I would rise to pray before dawn in snow and ice and rain. I have never felt the worst of it and I never felt lazy as I realize now the spirit was burning in me at the time. In a dream here now he recalls when the Holy Spirit prompted him and gave him an escape route from slavery in Ireland. It was there one night in my sleep that I heard a voice saying to me, You have fasted well. Very soon you will return to your native country. Again, after a short while, I heard someone saying to me, Look, your ship is ready. It was not nearby, but a good 200 miles away. I had never been to the place, nor did I know anyone there. So I ran away then and left the man with whom I had been for six years. It was in the strength of God that I went. God should turn the direction of my life to good. I feared nothing while I was on the journey to that ship. So here is St. Patrick. He travels about 200 miles to some port and he escapes back home on a ship. He meets some sailors and convinces them to, to bring him home. Now during his escape on the boat and afterwards when walking with the sailors they were very hungry for lack of food. Patrick showed them, the sailors, how to pray and how to have faith in God. After three days we made it to land and then for 28 days we travelled through a wilderness. Food ran out and great hunger came over them. The captain turned to me and said, what about this Christian? You tell us that your God is great and all-powerful. Why can't you pray for us, since we're in a bad state with hunger? There is no sign of us finding a human being anywhere. Then I said to them with some confidence, Turn in faith with all your hearts to the Lord my God, because nothing is impossible for him so that he may put food in your way, even enough to make you fully satisfied. He has an abundance everywhere. With the help of God, this is actually what happened. A herd of pigs appeared in the way before our eyes. They killed many of them, and there they remained for two nights, and were fully restored, and the dogs too were filled. Many of them had grown weak and left half alive by the way. After this, they gave the greatest of thanks to God, and I was honoured in their eyes. From this day on, they had plenty of food. They also found some wild honey and offered some of it to me. However, one of them said, 
This honey must have been offered in sacrifice to a god. Thanks be to God, from then on I tasted none of it. Now after six years in Ireland, we've just heard how Patrick made his escape. The Holy Spirit prompted him and directed him to the boat. And he made his escape and eventually he made his way back to his home place in Britain. And he's back home with his parents now and it is here in another dream that he hears the call to go back to Ireland for a great mission. A few years later, I was again with my parents in Britain. They welcomed me as a son and they pleaded with me that after all the many tribulations I had undergone, I should never leave them again. It was while I was there that I saw in a vision in the night, a man whose name was Victoricus. Coming as it were from Ireland with so many letters, they could not be counted. He gave me one of these and I read the beginning of the letter, the voice of the Irish people. While I was reading out the beginning of the letter, I thought I heard at that moment the voice of those who were beside the wood of Walcott, near the Western Sea. They called out as it were with one voice, We beg you, holy boy, to come and walk again among us. This touched my heart deeply and I could not read any further. I woke up then. Thanks be to God, after many years, the Lord granted them what they were calling for. So we don't know that place name either, the Wood of Vaucloth. We don't know where it is. Uh, perhaps it was in the west of Ireland. We don't know who Victoricus is either, but he could have been one of the, the French saints. There was a few uh, French saints by that name, Victoricus. Now, St. Patrick was a deeply prayerful individual and was very aware of the Holy Spirit working in him. Listen to how he expresses this. Another time I saw in me one who was praying. It was as if I were inside my body and I heard above me, that is, above my inner self. He prayed strongly with sighs. I was amazed and astonished and pondered who it was who prayed in me. But at the end of the prayer it was clear that it was the Spirit. At this I awoke and I remembered the Apostle saying, The Spirit helps the weaknesses of our prayer. For we do not know what it is we should pray, but the very Spirit pleads for us with unspeakable sighs, which cannot be expressed in words. And again, the Lord is our advocate and pleads for us. Now at this point of the story, Patrick skips a few years. Patrick studied for the priesthood in Auxerre in France and was ordained by Saint Germanus. He does not put these years into his confessions because he wants to focus on his time in Ireland. Eventually he is ordained a bishop and has a strong desire to return to Ireland to spread the gospel there. To do that would be to follow the dream in which he heard the call to go back and walk among the Irish. Now St. Patrick, he admits that when he was 15 years old, before he was kidnapped, he committed some sin. He does not tell us what kind of sin he committed. And before his ordination, he confessed this sin to a certain priest who was a friend of his. Now that should have been the end of the matter. His sin should have been kept a secret. However, much to St. Patrick's anguish, the old friend began to bring up the sin again. And he tells other people about that sin. And Patrick feels very betrayed by this friend and is very hurt. They brought up against me after 30 years something I had already confessed before I was a deacon. What happened was that one day when I was feeling anxious and low with a very dear friend of mine, I referred to some things I had done one day. Rather in one hour when I was young, before I overcame my weakness. I don't know, God knows, whether I was then 15 years old at the time and I did not then believe in the living God, not even when I was a child. In fact, I remained in death and unbelief until I was reproved strongly and actually brought low by hunger and nakedness daily. So St. Patrick has been betrayed by his old priest friend and also has been treated rather badly by the other bishops, the bishops in Britain and France, 
who did not think that he should go to Ireland. However, he remains strong in faith, as these words show. So I'll never stop giving thanks to my God, who kept me faithful in the time of my temptation. I can today with confidence offer my soul to Christ my Lord as a living victim. He is the one who defended me in all my difficulties. I can say, who am I Lord, or what is my calling, that you have worked with me with such divine presence? This is how I come to praise and magnify your name among the nations all the time, wherever I am, not only in good times, but in the difficult times too. Whatever comes about for me, good or bad, I ought to accept them equally and give thanks to God. He has shown me that I can put my faith in him without wavering and without end. However ignorant I am, he has heard me, so that in these late days I can dare to undertake such a holy and wonderful work. In this way I can imitate somewhat those whom the Lord foretold would announce his gospel and witness to all nations before the end of the world. This is what we see has been fulfilled. Look at us, we are witnesses that the gospel has been preached right out to where there is nobody else there. St. Patrick actually thought that Ireland was the edge of the world. He thought Ireland was the last country uh, to be evangelized with the gospel. People in Europe at that time didn't know of the existence of the Americas. Now Patrick was very determined to go to Ireland which he thought was the last country to receive the gospel. And he did go to Ireland eventually, and his missionary work was very successful. He converted many people to Christ, and he baptized thousands. Was the work easy? No, the work wasn't easy. The following passages testify that Patrick bore many insults. He was persecuted and at times imprisoned for this work of preaching the gospel. But he said, that he would be willing even to die because of the importance of the work of preaching the gospel. And many were the gifts offered to me, along with sorrow and tears. There were those whom I offended, even against the wishes of some of my superiors. But with God guiding me, I did not consent or acquiesce to them. It was not by my own grace, but God who overcame it in me, and resisted them all so that I could come to the people of Ireland to preach the gospel. I bore insults from unbelievers so that I would hear the hatred directed at me for traveling here. I bore many persecutions, even chains, so that I could give up my freedom state for the sake of others. If I be worthy, I am ready even to give up my life most willingly here, and now for his name. It is there that I wish to spend my life until I die, if the Lord should grant it to me. Now prior to Christianity coming to Ireland, the Irish were pagans. They worshipped the sun. They served idols and unclean things. But now, according to St. Patrick, even the sons and daughters of the chieftains, the leaders of the Irish people, they are converting to the true faith. They are converting to Christ. How was this happened in Ireland? Never before did they know of God except to serve idols and unclean things. But now they have become the people of the Lord and they are children called to God. The sons and daughters of the leaders of the Irish are seen to be monks and virgins of Christ. So life is not easy for St. Patrick. He is preaching the gospel to the Irish people. And sometimes he is tempted to despair by the devil. I hope to do what I should. I know I cannot trust myself as long as I am in this body subject to death. There is one who is strong, who tries every day to undermine my faith and the chastity of genuine religion I have chosen to the end of my life for Christ my Lord. The flesh can be an enemy dragging towards death, that is, towards doing those enticing things which are against the law. I know to some extent how I have not led a perfect life like other believers, but I acknowledge this to my Lord and I do not blush in his sight. I am not telling lies. From the time in my youth that I came to know him, the love and reverence for God grew in me, and so far, with the Lord's help, I have kept faith. 
Now, because St. Patrick was a great leader in the church in Ireland, holy people would love him and they would shower him with gifts. They would give him jewelry and so forth. And this, this, was, this was a show of their affection for him, but it was also a problem because he knew that he would be accused of seeking material wealth for himself. I know that I am inexperienced in all things, but still I have tried to keep a guard on myself and for the Christians and virgins of Christ and religious women who were giving me small gifts of their own accord. When they would throw some of their ornaments on the altar, I would give them back to them. They were hurt at me that I would do this, but it was because of the hope of the eternal gift that I was careful in all things. In case unbelievers would trap me or my ministry of service for any reason. Nor did I want to give those who could not believe even the slightest reason for speaking against me or take my character away. Now this is probably the reason St. Patrick wrote this book, The Confessions, because he, wanted to, he wants to defend himself and his work against the accusation of doing work for money and honor and worldly glory for himself. He wants to claim that his motives for going among the Irish were pure. Perhaps, however, when I baptized so many thousands of people, did I hope to receive even the smallest payment? If so, tell me, and I will return it to you. Or when the Lord ordained clerics everywhere through my poor efforts, and I give this service to them for free, if I ask them to pay, even for the cost of my shoes, tell it against me, and I will return it to you, and more. Now Patrick explains that he gave his all just to spread the gospel out of love for the Irish people, even risking his life. I spend myself for you, so that you may have me for yours. I have travelled everywhere among you for your own sake, in many dangers and even to the furthest parts where nobody lived beyond and where nobody ever went to baptize and to ordain clerics or to bring people to fulfillment. It is only by God's gift that I diligently and most willingly did all of this for your good. The only honor that Patrick wants is to be great in God's eyes. I see that already in this present age, the Lord has given me a greatness more than could be expected. I was not worthy of this, not the kind of person the Lord would do this for, since I know for certain that poverty and calamity are more my style than riches and enjoyment. But Christ the Lord became poor for us. I too am wretched and unhappy. Even if I were to wish for riches, I do not have them. I am not trying to judge myself, since every day there is a chance that I will be killed or surrounded or be taken into slavery or some other such happening. But I fear none of these things, because of the promises of heaven. I have cast myself into the hands of Almighty God, who is the ruler of all places. As the prophet says, cast your concerns on God, and he will sustain you. Once more, Patrick says that he would willingly shed his blood for the sake of those whom he, he baptized. He truly loves the Irish people. If I have ever imitated anything good for the sake of my God whom I love, I ask that he grant me to be able to shed my blood with these converts and captives. Even were I to lack a grave for burial, or my dead body were to be miserably torn apart limb from limb by dogs or wild beasts, or were the birds of heaven to devour it, I declare with certainty that if this were to happen, I would have gained both my soul and my body. There is no doubt whatever that we will rise on the appointed day in the brightness of the sun, that is, in the glory of Christ Jesus our Redeemer. We shall be like children of the living God and co-heirs of Christ, and to be fashioned in his image, since it is from him and through him and in him that we are to reign. Now before Christianity came to Ireland, the pagans in Ireland worshipped the sun in the sky. Now St. Patrick explains that there is new knowledge of the true sun, that shines, and that sun that shines is Christ. The sun which we see rising for us each day at his command, that sun will never rain, nor will its splendor continue forever. And all those who adore that sun will come to a miserable penalty. 
We, however, believe in and adore the true Son, that is Christ, who will never perish. Nor will they perish who do as well, but they will abide forever, just as Christ will abide forever. He lives with God the Father Almighty, and with the Holy Spirit before the ages began, and now and for all the ages of ages. Amen. And finally, St. Patrick finishes his book with a prayer for all Christian believers. I pray for those who believe in and have reverence for God. Some of them may happen to inspect or come upon this writing, which Patrick, a sinner without learning, wrote in Ireland. May none of them ever say that whatever little I did or made known to please God was done through ignorance. Instead, you can judge and believe in all truth that it was a gift of God. This is my confession before I die. So a truly remarkable story. And after he brought the faith to Ireland, or he, he made the faith blossom in Ireland, Ireland became one of the strongest Christian nations across the world. The priests and religious in Ireland, they went out from Ireland then and they brought the faith to many other countries, America, Australia, and they founded monasteries in many places. They were sent to Africa to, to go on the missions. So the work of St. Patrick had a, a wonderful legacy. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, especially reading uh, his confessions, I suppose it gives you a real insight into the person because uh, we're so used to, uh, you know, reading the various stories and legends of St. Patrick, which are all so lovely. You know, the this connection with the color green and the shamrock using it to explain about the Trinity and the nature of God, three in one. And all that goes with St. Patrick and that's embraced in Irish culture as well. But when you read his own words, it also gives you a unique uh, perspective on him as a human person and not only as a saint. Yeah, powerful character. He's, he was really <clears throat> full of the Holy Spirit. And mm. even though he wasn't very articulate or well-educated, he must have been very, very persuasive and charismatic when he spoke to uh, his listeners. And he would have converted many Irish chieftains, which wouldn't have been an easy task. Uh, but he had he had a good way about him. Absolutely, yeah. And he was seemed very much that his glory. He wanted to give everything uh, to God and receive so much more in return through the Holy Spirit and mm -hmm. such conviction and courage. Which is great to have that passion for what we believe in in a loving way and then uh, transmitting that lovingly to others. Mm -hmm. And he truly loved his flock. I mean, he was, he was a bishop, but he, you could see in the writing there that he had a great heart for his converts and those he had baptized. So he truly loved uh, his people. So Father Eamon, you might like to conclude uh, by finishing with a prayer and I suppose invoking St. Patrick's intercession for our students, their families, for all who will watch this video and of course uh, for the whole of Ireland as well. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So these lines are taken from a very famous prayer called the Breastplate of St. Patrick. I bind to myself today the strong virtue of the invocation of the Trinity. I believe the Trinity in the unity, the creator of the universe. I bind to myself today the virtue of the incarnation of Christ with his baptism, the virtue of his crucifixion with his burial, the virtue of his resurrection with his ascension, the virtue of his coming on the judgment day. I bind to myself today God's power to guide me, God's might to uphold me, God's wisdom to teach me, God's eye to watch over me, God's ear to hear me, God's word to give me speech, God's hand to guide me, God's way to lie before me, God's shield to shelter me, God's host to secure me, Christ with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ within me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, 
Christ at my right, Christ at my left, Christ in the fort, Christ in the chariot seat, Christ with me when I am at home, Christ with me when I am traveling by land, in the ship when I am traveling by water. I believe the Trinity in the unity, the creator of the universe. St. Patrick, pray for us. Pray Blessed Carlo Acutis, pray for pray us. St. Joseph, pray, for, pray us. for us. Our Lady of Knock, pray, pray for, for us. us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.